Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley. I'm doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Vim. Hello. Hello, uh, Christian. <laughs> Finally, we meet. Finally. <laughs> I know we've been playing, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we've been rescheduling this over and over again for, for literally like three and a half, four months now. So yeah, I think it's but, something like that. Yeah. For folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So I'm Wim Matthäusen. I will pronounce my back name like I would say it in Dutch. Um, I live in Belgium. Um, I started in IT, I think around 2002, um, just as a technical engineer, helping people with all kinds of issues, going from printers to servers and so on. And then started working with servers, Hyper-V. Everybody in Belgium was working with VMware, but so yep. for some reason, I ended up at a customer <laughs> focusing on Hyper-V. Even started off with virtual server, went to Hyper-V and then so on, system center, the whole system center, sorry, added. And then, um, yeah, I came in contact with some people um, of the Belgium system center user group. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started off with community. First, uh, simply writing blogs, uh, issues, day-to-day -day issues um, and how I solved them. Um, also focusing on Hyper-V and those things. And I think uh, around 2014, I made the switch to uh, the cloud. So Azure, yep. that's also yep. the early beginning. First phases of Azure where almost in Belgium, nobody was using it, only specific customers. Um, yeah, and since then I'm yeah almost purely focusing on Azure and then I must say the hybrid cloud these days. So the complete arc story with that, um, we're seeing quite an adoption of that also in Belgium these days in the Netherlands. Um, so in a way, I went from on-premises to the cloud, and now I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you know, it's, so it's using so those things from before. Yeah, it's so funny about this space too. Is that so? I I went to a, join a startup in uh, early 2001, where yeah. we built a dedicated cloud platform, and okay. we, you know, that was like at the beginning of when you know SaaS as an acronym yeah. was yeah. was created. And then to hear like, uh, uh, so Microsoft president of collaborative apps and, and solutions is, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Teeper talk okay. about like, he feels like it wasn't until like 2015, 2016, where really there was the broad acceptance. We finally crossed that threshold into the cloud. And I, and I, I sat there talking to him. I interviewed him uh, in Amsterdam uh, in end of November. And it was just thinking about that like, wow, that was, so for me, it was 15 years of trying to convince people, uh, you know, this for is me, the direction. Still, these days, I'm still convincing people because I, I see in the Netherlands is quite fast with their cloud adoption and Azure and, and that's yeah being used there quite a lot. But in Belgium, we're always a little bit like, much slower in adopting new stuff. Yeah, and so, you know what? Yeah. Everybody says that though. That I mean, that's yeah, that's, but... that's true. I mean, in every region, I mean, I I know no. that there's um, I mean, there's other issues too. Like, you know, Americans will go and build out some technology and throw it out there and be like. And anybody look at governance? Anybody look at security? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah well, well. And then they all next, go back. That's right. That next yeah, generation. It's, it's, it's sometimes yeah. it's strange. I, I think I'm, I'm already doing these things from 2014, and you're starting now with the adoption. We're 2024. So it's 10 yeah. years later, and I'm already doing those things for 10 years. And you're just starting with EAS, for example. And I think, which thing were you missing in between in those 10 years? that you just start adoption, you're just moving your on-prem VMs to Azure. And yeah. I think, yeah, but we are already 50 steps ahead now. So what do you, what do you think? What, why, why are some people, why are some organizations so slow? I mean, so I, like I always, I would, would always say coming from the project and portfolio management side of things. And, and one of the reasons why it took a long time for many of those organizations, because they invested so heavily, they're like, yeah. we're not going to even look at spending new money until we've gotten the value it, out of what we've already purchased. Yeah. And so Sometimes that's one reason. It's just uh, a license thing. Eh? We just bought this for three years. We're still going to use it. We have, yeah. uh, for example, new VMware license whatsoever. doesn't matter. Okay, we have 
for three years, five years Citrix uh, licenses. We're just going to use it. And even the first three years don't look at anything else. Right. But they don't think future-wise. And sometimes the thing I see, um, if people, especially the technical people, are familiar with something and they manage something for five, six years, for them, okay, I'm getting older. I'm uh, 20 years from my retirement. Yeah, I'm not going yeah. to change my complete way of working because somebody invented cloud or start, uh, they, they advise us to use cloud because that's... It's a, it's a skill set they have, but they also need to switch the way of thinking, the way of deploying things, the way uh, it's, it's, it's a process. And some people, I think, are easy with that. Also, if the company um, yeah, uses it and the company yeah. supports all the cool. stuff and they give you their trainings and so on and so on. But sometimes I see still people, but it works. I don't touch it. But it's well, the, running well the, 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 then you get into conversations, right? This is it's, it's funny. I mean, there's a huge focus when I got my my MBA was around you know the opportunity cost. What does it cost you? You know, one, there's the initial investment. Yeah, you might have two years left on the licenses that you have, yeah. but what is the value of the features, of the capability, of the speed, or the lack of, thereof? You know, what is that cost? And at some you point, even add new things yeah, because right? it's not because you bought that license or you, you use it for five years, did they add something that brought you some more capabilities, some more features you were waiting on or just using the same thing once over again for the next five years? Yeah. So, so the innovation part is also quite important, I think, and, and the vision of the company and then where do we want to get and, and yeah, how many people can we support and so on and so on. So I, I guess what we're saying here is that I like I, I feel your pain of what you yeah. still have to go through. <laughs> like and it's and it's basically we're we're having to go and make the same points. I just had was having a conversation with this this morning about somebody that had concerns about security in the cloud. And 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 I'm sure you have that discussion all the time. Like the same okay, discussion. You're I'm on prem, what you're doing, yeah. you have the utmost, you know, uh uh, uh you, you know, you feel that that is secure, that it's hardened, that there's like you're managing it all yourself. If your security person uh, is sick or is injured and is missing work, like what happens to your environment, your level yeah. of trust? Sure. Yeah. Sometimes because they see the, the boxes in their data center or they see the cables running underneath the floor. Okay, now I'm safe because I see everything. But when I'm going into the cloud, I don't see anything around it. I just see my thing and yeah, what are they doing around it? I don't know. I don't think, yeah. And for some people it still seems like, yeah, lack on security or don't trust it because it's just not visible. Like they opened their door and okay, my five servers are in my closet. Okay, I'm safe. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing that opens up too is uh, is that shadow IT yeah. is because you have these, uh, you know, that we're, we're all technologists at some level. I mean, people are, are information workers. They may not be in touching the servers, but they can yeah. certainly understand the advance, uh, the advances in the capabilities of the various solutions that are out there. Yeah. And so when the IT organization, the company says no, because we've got two more years on these licenses. They, they find a workaround to get their job done in the way they want to do it. Which I'm sure is completely secure. And Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. 15 years ago, nobody was doing IT. And it was purely for people really doing it as their job. Even now, everybody at my house can yeah, plug in a PC, plug in the printer and get it fixed. Eh? Uh, yeah. 10 years ago, you had to solve the printer problem. Yeah, those things. Yeah, everybody can do those things. Every, everybody can plug in a, a Wi-Fi router. And yeah, okay, I'm, I can get online. I, I fix my own stuff. If it doesn't yeah. work that way, I will find another way to get it working. I'm always amazed at, at how much, when there's a technical question of something, I just had a, bought some uh, expensive camera equipment. And my, my wife, who's more of a photographer and she's able to get, I'm trying to figure it out. And I just go into YouTube. Yeah. That's and, the thing. Yeah. yeah just, just go and completely YouTube, walk through. Up, right. Figure it out. Read a blog post whatsoever. And yeah, everybody can read. I think so. They yeah, read yeah. it. They try it out. And if it's not working, they look at something differently. And yeah, that's a big difference between, um, when I was started up with, with managing servers in a big environment, I had to figure out everything myself. Nobody 
teach me. I need to look out, uh, yeah, test some things, fall back, ask questions to more senior people maybe, but I didn't go on the internet and tak -a -tak -a -tak and looked it up. It wasn't there. So for yeah. troubleshooting skill sets, that's something I see missing with the younger people these days. Yeah, yeah if, if they can't find it on YouTube, they, if they can't find it through Google, uh, chat GTP these days, they don't, don't get it fixed. Yeah. But it's not because an AI is saying what you need to do that you in the back know what you're doing. That's something. But see, we're with. getting very close to where we'll get back to having like the Google glasses. We'll yeah. have the, the headset. My car breaks down the side of the road. I'll be able to open it up, call my mechanic right from yeah. there. He'll be able to do the augmented reality and see, hey, check this. Oh, I can see something as a miss. Yep. Yep. You know, it, he'll but be tied in. If, if you know what you're doing and it's your day-to-day -day job and you're, you're completely familiar with Azure or your on-premise environment, doesn't matter. And then you look something up through those things and that's saying you need to do this, that's this step, seven, eight. And you see something is wrong, you will know if something is wrong. If you've never done it before on your own, you're just going click, click, uh, click ups yeah. or whatsoever, and you go through it. And then, yeah, maybe it's even worsely configured than it was before. Okay. Well, that's one of the I, one of the lessons need to teach to the younger generation is to understand the power of community. Like you yeah. talked about, like you coming up, at, but I, like I don't know the answer to every question. Nope. But I'm pretty confident I know somebody who knows the answer to that. I, most of the time, if I don't know the question, I just ask somebody. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, and in, I, in Belgium, yeah, we all, I, with some other people, I also have uh, a Microsoft Cloud and Client Management Community, MC2MC, mm -hmm. MC, and where we focus on uh, three pillars. So we have people skilled in Azure, uh, everything Windows servers, Arc, uh, AVD. We have uh, the, the second pillar is endpoint and security. So we have quite a lot of people in our community focusing on purely endpoint, Intune, Microsoft 365, mm -hmm. Defender, and those things. And now we even have added the third pillar uh, where yeah, everybody's focusing on, uh, yeah, it's also quite a buzzword these days, data, AI, and the Power Automate and Power Platform. So if I have a customer a problem, normally they come to me to Azure, but they, most of the time they, they, they have asked, yeah, do you know somebody that knows this because you have a broad network and you, yeah. you almost know everybody? Yeah, I can ping somebody, but yeah, he probably can help you fix your problem. That's how I mostly get something fixed. I don't know. Right, probably. Except in the realm of AI where there's a whole lot of people yeah. talking and nobody, we all have the same amount of experience. <laughs> yeah. It's all well, new for everybody. Yeah. I was going to ask those, like, so when you, uh, uh, kind of going back to your roots and becoming an, uh, yeah. an MVP, uh, and you talked about getting plugged into the user group there, like, so yeah. how did you get involved? Because a lot of people struggle with that. Like, well, do I just go and raise my hand and say, hey, I'd like to get more involved? I always tell people, yes do that in some way you can yeah. and, uh for me it was somebody also um working at the same customer i was working on he was doing uh scone for example and he invited me yeah you do hyper v you do the system center virtual machine manager nobody in belgium is almost talking about it won't you be interested to write a blog uh, okay writing a blog i will do i start with writing a blog yeah we have the platform you just need to write a blog post and you can add it to our platform and just focus on those things. And that's how I started off. And then from that, it started to, do you want to do a public presentation? Eh? Oh, for public, I need to talk for people and explain my, yeah, just talk about what you're writing and, and show mm -hmm. your experience and just mm -hmm. go ahead. And yeah, with that, yeah. For me it, now, it, talking is like having fun. I'm even not stressed anymore well, or whatsoever. It just go with the flow and yeah. So have you ever had uh, uh, somebody uh, in your audience that you've presented to um, that has uh, just ripped you to pieces in what you're presenting about? Have you, have you had that experience? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. Not so uh, I've, but, I've, but I, I saw people I've, doing it to other speakers. Yeah. And I, I find, and, and I always think, fan, wait a minute, you're in front of all those people. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I'd always, I always like to ask because I've, again, I've witnessed some of that. Yeah. I've had a couple of experiences, which I think yeah. I handled it pretty well. 
And one of the things I always, uh, which is a great thing to have is a bit of humility. And somebody asked a question and I said, you know, I have no idea. Like that, I'm- Yeah, like, we there, can talk about it after do. our like, session. Let me look into it. Yeah. Um, get, let me go get back to you or whatsoever. Um, but if it, it really depends of the audience most of the time, I think, and, and where you're talking. If for a user group, it's easier to communicate, but most people coming to those user group evening events know each other. So right. it's on a, in a more polite way. If you're at a big event yeah. and somebody raises hand just because he wants to make a point. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. There's a, well, there, there's a, yeah, there's certainly an art to that, especially yep. I've been in where there've been people in the audience that have just completely uh, the phrase that we use here, railroaded, you know, yep. the conversation, taking it over and there, and the speakers were uh, not very good at, well, how do Protecting I take themselves and answering right. how do I pull and, it back uh, in and move yeah, on? There's yeah, some, no, I'm, I'm quite yeah. direct in that way. I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, I know we're getting there. We're over here and we're getting there. And yeah. sometimes people interrupt. Yeah. And, and this and this and this. Yes. Okay. But we're just starting our story. Let us, in the end, eh? between the middle, we're getting there. We will yeah. explain how we see it. Sometimes I mean, people are also 50 miles ahead, but yeah. Yeah. You need to think not everybody in the audience most of the time has the same experience. So yeah, I, I do a lot of uh, duo talks with, with Micha and we always try to explain the things we're talking about um, the easiest way. So people just using it, don't knowing it can follow but also the experienced people if they wait a little bit we always try to right. uh, yeah yeah well you, you need to yeah. well there's there's somebody i mean, this is i i've forgotten the reference it's been so long but you know one of the uh said uh, it's a skill in presenting to at the beginning tell people yeah. what you're going to present to them yeah go through the presentation at the end summarize what you presented to them yeah. so that yeah. they understand what was covered, what is yeah. not going to be covered. And I that's why smaller groups, I always, I love having a whiteboard or something where yeah, just questions we can and explaining call it parking yeah. lot or whatever, take it offline later. But, you know, hey, yeah. these questions that we did not cover, come back to me uh, or let's talk after my session. I also give trainings and that makes it easier if you need to do an hour session. It's easier to fit in everything in between because you're used to talking about something for hours and hours and hours and explain it from a to z yeah but sometimes you need to fit it in 50 minutes or 60 minutes and yeah it's it's, it's after doing it more and more you yeah you get more familiar with it how to handle it how to build up maybe your slides do we do a lot of slides do we more demo and talk through the demos and yeah, yeah. It, it depends it what? also depends on the audience most of the time I always love doing, uh, you know, at the user groups and certainly at uh, community driven events. Like we're getting ready to do our collab days, Utah yeah. event in April. Yeah. And we're wrapping up the entire, with an hour of the ask the experts. One of my favorite segments where you, all the speakers that are still there, some have to leave a little early, but you yeah. put them all on stage and let, just let the audience ask questions, yeah. doing AMAs and ask the S experts, the AMAs for folks that don't ask me anything. Um, yeah. those, those formats are sometimes the most rewarding. And I, yeah. cause I learn a lot too. I like sit with all these other experts and somebody's bound to know. We, the, we organize yeah. quite a lot of evening events and every time I learn something. Yeah. For some reason, even if I'm working with those things, everybody has another point of view, looks at things in another way. Maybe they're doing it this way, that way. Maybe it's a better way than how you done it for the last two months or whatsoever um yeah you can yeah. i think you can learn you can always learn something from yeah. somebody well so uh, final question for you i always like to yeah. ask a version of this but so uh, i'm sure you've had you've been an mvp for four years four and a half years yeah, now four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, you've got people coming up and asking like hey, well how do i become an mvp like what what's your advice what's your guidance to people of what to do to my thing that? was all this, i i i i love the community i love sharing just start up with with uh, blogging about something you love to do um build it up talk about things you love to do not everybody loves to be in front of a public maybe you can you make youtube videos there are different ways but mm -hmm. 
there's no, in my opinion, just do the things you love. And probably if people like it, it will be picked up. There's no direct way to get, okay, I started blogging and I'm now an MVP. Right. And I get a lot of those questions from people. And I say, I just love the things I'm doing. I'm not doing it to become an MVP. Right. I, I, I like writing blogs i like organizing those um evening events i like to um yeah talk to people in a public uh, in a, in, on an event uh yeah and yep. just sometimes it's my thought it's not yeah for me it's yeah love what you do share what you do and maybe you will get there otherwise you don't get there and that's yeah but even if you don't, you're doing what you love and you're helping yeah. the community and yeah. you're going to get value out of it. Yeah. You're going to get benefits yeah. from that. Helping yeah. other people, I like call it karma, whatever you want to call yeah. it. There's yeah. value. If, if you help people, people will also help you when you ask right. a question. That's yeah. how I mostly see it. Um, I just share what I'm doing and how I fix things. But I even also read other blog posts, look at videos from other people that solve a problem I come up uh, come up from and i don't know how to solve it and yeah it's just sharing sharing and caring and yeah yep 100 percent. well yep. well when really appreciate your time uh getting to know yeah. you and i'm glad we were finally able to connect are you coming over for the mvp summit uh we'll try if i can yeah. fix my plane in a hotel because yeah. uh it's, it's easier if you live in the u.s i think yeah it is so uh next week i will be at the mct summit that's not that far yeah. from me but uh yep. normally i i subscribe to go to the mvp summit but i still need to uh, figure it out with um my uh, company i'm working for if i can yeah yeah because it's quite a huge amount of money it <laughs> is i know you pay it for yourself so uh we'll see hopefully we get there yeah. Well, yeah. for folks that want to reach out to you, connect with you, where are you most active in social? Where can people find um, you? I'm still on X. <laughs> I started off with Twitter. I'm still there. Um, so uh, if you look me up at Vema Tassin, um, you will probably figure it out. I have my own blog, uh, Vema Um Also quite, uh, whenever I do something blogs, I also post it on LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn, X, um, you can find me on the MC2MC website from my user group. Um, so different ways to find me. And if you ever have a question related to something I'm focusing on, um, just uh, ask. And if I can help, I would probably help you. Excellent. And of course, I'll have all the links that are out on the blog post, out on yeah. uh, YouTube and out in the podcast as well. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.